You can last three through now be an alternate line or club the Amro Pass the points here. Well, you're very welcome to the Athletic Grounds here on a blistery sunny afternoon for the semi-final of the Cormac Leonard commercial sponsored championship, the intermediate championship semi-final here between St. Peter's of Lurgan and Shane O'Neill's of Camla. So it's North Armagh versus South Armagh and the intermediate semi-final here in the Athletic Grounds and I have to welcome uh, John Joe. John Joe, you're very welcome again here to live Linwood's Armagh TV. Thank you very much indeed, Damien. Looking forward to a cracking game of football here. We're just talking in the press box here, and uh, half the press box is going with Shane O'Neill's, and the other half of the press box is going with St. Peter's. So we're going to we're going to be staying neutral here. There is some changes on the team, so we we call out the teams here. Uh, John Joe's going to call out St. Peter's. Yeah, I'll go with that one. St. Peter's number one, Michael McAvlin, number two, Connor Clark. Number three is out, 26 is in for him, that's Glenn Fanagan. Number four is Alex McCabe, number five, Emmett Hohian. Robbie Greer is number six, Owen McCormick is number seven. 18 is in for number eight, that's a uh, Kieran McGavigan. Number nine is Aaron Finton. Number 25 is changed for number 10, Darren Moore. So that's number 10 is out, and that's number eight. Keelan O'Neill is in. Niall Craney is in for number 11, 12 Rui McDonald. Shea Gerrity back from America, he's in at number 13, Niall McConville. Ex county player now still there at 14, and Fergal Moore's in at 15. And the Shane O'Neill starting team is Connor Ruddy, David Boyle, Michael McParl, Nathan Morgan, Peter O'Brien, Park Hilton, Michael Brady, Kieran Macken, Mark Feehan, Christian McGinn, Connor Macken, Greg McCabe, and Neil Paul Lennon is not playing. In comes Eamon McCabe, David McCabe is full forward and no relation, by the way. And out goes Mark McCabe, and in comes Paul O'Rourke. And that's the way Shane O'Neill's will be lining out here this afternoon. We have a standby referee. Unfortunately, Paddy Coos is not referee in this. We have to uh, offer our condolences to uh, the Morton family from Mullaban, Joe Morton, who referees for uh, in the Armagh Leagues. And, of course, father-in-law of Paddy. Uh, the fa father-in-law passed away last night. So on behalf of everybody here uh, in Armagh TV and the Father GA Field, our, our thoughts and prayers are with the Morton family at this sad time. So we have a, a, a standby referee. Yeah, that's Leon Reynolds, put it down, man. So Leon Reynolds is in here, referee in the game. Both teams are out. The toss has been done. The, there is a very, very strong breeze blowing towards the cathedral lane at a night. Uh, a couple of senior county players playing here this evening, so you know they will be looking to them, and of course that's Greg McCabe and Connor Macken who who led them the last time round again. Clonmore, we covered it live here on Limwood Arma TV, and then of course when you look at the St Peters, you look at the uh, Arn Finden and uh, of course Niall McConville. So those two, the, the, those are the probably the go-to men here in the both times this afternoon. So the, we're battering here with the, the PS system, but we're looking forward to a cracking game of intermediate football. Last night the sun was blinding us here. The day it's windy, it's very very windy. There's a little bit of a, well, there's a bit of rain coming down. Not too much, but it is very very windy. So I would imagine, John, the, the guys who's playing towards the cathedral end, that's the right hand side of the. Athletic grounds here, they would be, uh, they, 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 they will have the big advantage. Oh, definitely in this match, as I say, the ground's probably going to be a wee bit skiddy, but the pitch is looking superb as usual. Ronan has it in great order. It's been a lot of football played on. Again, there's a double header after this today. Cully Hanna played across McLean, so and that'll be an interesting, but the crowd's really in here for this first match, which is great to see. And we've got our absolute, the best Twitter mark score of the whole leagues in here, the Derry News say it. Well, the MLA ladies as well. He also does uh, the ladies as well. He's in here the day and he's going to be tweeting out results here as scores as they go because he nearly, he's nearly tweeting them out before they happen. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, uh, we have, uh, I know some of the umpires here, uh, we have Pat McGill who looks after the South Arm on the 14 development squad. Pat's the leader in that and he's out there doing, uh, I see Conor Macken or Young Macken coming out here. Kieran Macken getting a little bit of medical attention. So that would be a concern for Shane O'Neill's. Or maybe he's just getting a drink of water for the gum shield. That's what he's doing, so everything's okay down below. And we wait now to see how this game pans out. Yeah, I was just noticing Brian Canavan's on one of the lines, so at least there's plenty of experience in amongst the referees and the line staff, and the umpires are just well wrapped up today because there is a cool breeze. This is the first time we've really seen this all, all year, Damon, that this is such a strong wind. 
Yeah, it is a very strong breeze, and uh, as the proverbial saying goes, it's going to be a game of two halves. You know, sometimes maybe the the wind doesn't help you, but I I, I firmly believe if 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 you if you have big men on the square, you can put them in, and they can do that. So uh, there's the the handshake by the younger of the Mackins, and of course uh, my next door neighbour. They just live over the fence, <laughs> and that's Kieran. And Kieran's in the middle of the field. He's over shaking hands with uh, the linesmen, the umpires, and what have you. And yeah, as you say, Brian Canavan's over there as well. And uh, Brian, very experienced referee. So, well, you let on about your neighbours. I let on that uh, four nephews playing on this St. Peter's team. So, it'll be interesting to see what way they all perform today. But I'm just picking out, as you say, Aaron Finton's in there. And you said now, McConville. So, it'll be interesting to see who the go to men are. Teams are changing round, or they're, no, they're not. They're just moving. St. Peter's have some squad with them. <laughs> they have yeah. some squad with them. The St. Peter's are a big, big club, you know. And St. Peter's. Would be they would have been probably one of the biggest clubs in Lurgan at one time, you know. So, and a very very long established club. So, it'll be an interesting game, and of course, it's great to see that we be able, we should be able to see the numbers today because they're green jerseys with white numbers, and we have white jerseys with black numbers. So it leaves our job a little bit easier. And we have the local press in here. We have Gaelic Life. We have the Newry Reporter. We have uh, the Newry Democrat, and I'm not even sure who else we have behind us here, but they're all here anyway. But you'll hear it first here in live Linwood's Armagh TV. And we have to say hello to our camera woman here, Catherine Cuse. Catherine will have a wee, a wee connection to St. Peter's, but we'll, we'll tell you about that later as the game goes on. And of course, she was playing for Middletown in the final of the Camogie, and Graham Moore was playing earlier on. And we haven't heard that result yet, how Graham Moore got on against Balahi in the Camogie. The game is on, the ball is up in the air, broke down, and, well, it's strapped on the ground. It, lo- it allows St. Peter's, but again, a little bit jittery St. Shane O'Neill's playing towards the cathedral end. McCabe puts that ball in towards the full forward. A chance here for Shane O'Neill's to get the first score of the afternoon. He hits that one to the right. The umpires look at each other. One was going for a flag. The other was going, I think it's a wide. So it's a wide. And that should have been a score. Yeah, it was an Al Greeny. That one should have been, as you saw, it wasn't. It was uh, Connie... <laughs> Connor, Connor, Mackin, Connor, Mackin, Connor Mackin, Mackin, your next door neighbour, is not one yeah, of them, or is he from around your direction? That Sorry about that one. Yeah, that ball landed my garden there. <laughs> so, both teams now settling down. Well, we can see the strength of the breeze there from the kick out from the goalkeeper. Underneath is the ball drops short and is picked up by the corner man. The corner man is Clark. So, the full, fo- the midfield man. And that's big Finden, Aaron Finden with the ball, pushing out in the far side. This now allows St. Peter's. Finden's looking for the return pass. He's still waiting for it. Goes into the inside line here. St. Peter's driving forward. Like this time, it's Clark, the corner man. Back to the wing half back. The wing half back, McCormick. McCormick gives a daisy cutter into that man, McConville. He's been pulled, and the referee has indicated that that's a free. And now McConville come out. And once now, pulls the ball into the body. It is very, very hard for him to get it get out of it and he gets a free on the 45 metre line and up comes the wing half back the wing half back is Emmett Hocking and uh, this will be more like a well there's a strong breeze blowing so you would nearly say it's nearly a 70 metre free if he gets this one on score gets it into the into the scoring zone and maybe over the bar so he takes his time it's just inside the 45 straight in front of the Dalton Road goals here hits this one pulls it to the left well he got the distance but he didn't get the direction so Again, the breeze is blowing John Joe, at an angle, sort of a common slight angle across the field. It's not just blowing straight up and down the field. Yeah, so Emmett looked around him there to see if he could play it short because I didn't think he had the distance. But So Ruddy th- kicks the ball out and it drops over the top of the head. The far side, the ball was kicked along the ground. Finden comes out. He gathers that ball, pushing it out over to the man where number 18. And that's McGavigan over on the far side. He gets the ball, gives it inside and a chance to try to get it into McConville. So... St. Peter's going forward, that's the corner man, that's the corner man, Gregory puts it in again, St. Peter's building, pushing it inside, a chance here, there's a man on the outside, but the wing, ha- the centre half forward, spins on that one, puts it up in the air, gets a knock, the ball's coming down, a little bit of a push there by McConville, the referee has indicated that that's a freeze, the O'Neill's get on with the game, the ball is way over the far side, and Mackin's coming up the field, the referee says, stop the game, there's an injury to a St. Peter's man inside the D, so there's a little bit of an injury here, uh, he sort of fell awkwardly there, I thought, when he was going for the ball. So it's a free. Shane O'Neill's will hold the ball. They will get possession, more or less, in the middle of the field, playing with the breeze. And the way this breeze is going, you would think you would need to be getting maybe four or five points ahead at half time. Yeah, you would think so, because it is very strong. The flags are tugging away on the flagpoles. 
it was a St. Peter's man still down. I think it just turned round and just landed awkwardly on that ankle because he went down straight away. Now McCombs is making his way back there to strengthen up the defence, see what's happening. But they're going to, as you say, the first couple of shake, you already had a chance to set something up there. Yeah, well, there's no doubt about it. That's what, exactly what St. Peter's will do. They'll probably put a sweeper in maybe in front of the, the defence here and hope that they can get... Because they're going to need cover with the ball coming in. So yeah, Ma that's now Crianney up. He's up and about again. So the referee, is he going to, he's going to move the ball forward. A bit of patchiness there from St. Peter's. Damon, I have to say he's within scoring range there. If he well, it is. It's to it make a wee point, wee yard well, or two. Well, we know here in the, in the quarterfinal that Conor Mackin was hitting long frees and he was nailing them. So this is well within his... Definitely well within his range. It's halfway between the 45 and the 70 meter line here. So just basically halfway between them. So this is a chance at a little angle. And the way the breeze is going, if he gets his foot onto this one, this will definitely reach the goals. There's no question about that. Will he get the direction? Well, we'll know in two seconds. But Mackin is well capable of putting this one up and putting it over the bar from that distance. And he strikes it beautifully. And it went to the right and wide. He even got more distance, but the direction was wrong. Yeah, the distance was perfect. Just the direction was. When it caught it, just moved it across. Maybe should have aimed to the inside post. But a great effort and a great kick. Well, I think you're probably right there because the breeze is slightly going to the right of the goals. So if he had maybe targeted the left-hand post, it might have just went over, but it didn't. So again, McGavigan kicks this ball out. Ball drops short again. Three, four players going for it, but St. Peter's get the brick ball. Comes out now to the wing, half forward. McDonald, McDonald gets the ball. He's looking out the back, he pushes back, gets the return pass. So St. Peter's just holding on to the ball, driving up the field here with a very, very strong breeze. They'll probably be just trying to walk the ball up the field, I would imagine, and that's exactly what they're doing. Wing half back, kicks it away over to the far side. There's a man free away over there on the far side. There's nobody near him. Brian Cannon's the closest man to him, but Brian can't get ahead of steam up, and he's the linesman. The ball's kicked towards the corner, away over on the far side. St. Peter's gather that ball up. Drops the ball, a chance here. Well, the foot comes in there. The ball is kicked into space. Two, three players waiting for that. Shane O'Neill gets it up. Well, he gets a clip there, and that looks to be. I can't even see who that was there. Yeah, it was now McConville actually was penalised, but the ball is pushed in this time to McCabe. McCabe picks it up. David McCabe spinning around, gives the ball back inside to wing half forward. This time. Greg McCabe has the ball. Greg's going hand to toe. Offloads the pass this time to O'Brien. Pity O'Brien. Pity goes up the middle. Driving through the middle. Referee says he's been holed, but he should have maybe let him go on there because he had beaten everybody. And now Kieran Mackin has his hands in the ball. And he's looking for movement, but there's no movement. But he's going to leave that. Again, McCabe kicks that away down into the corner. And the centre three quarters goes to pick that up. Mackin picks it up. Going over the far side. Connor Mackin with the white boots. Thought he would have been hitting that free. Gives it back inside here. His little tackle. The referee's playing advantage. Shane O'Neill takes a shot. This time the ball goes wide and they'll be getting this back. So it's a free over on the far side. Yeah, he penalised Aaron Finton there for just leaving the hand in on the shoulder as he was going to kick the ball. Again, but in a, in a, in a great scoring range for Shane O'Neill's. Yeah, and of course if Mackin has uh, adjusted his radar from the last time, he should maybe know to be going towards the left-hand post. And with the wind blowing, it should just carry it over the goals or over the post. The breeze is blowing. And if you see the flags in the distance, you can't really see them. But when, when you see a shot of the flags, you'll know what I'm talking about. So Connor Mackin, the man from the quarter road. Brother of Amy Mackin. And Blaheen, both super ladies footballers. Ball is kicked up in the air. And this time Mackin nails that one. So the yeah, first score, yep. Great confident kick there. <laughs> Got his target right. Took seven minutes and 12 seconds to get the first score of the afternoon. And with this strong breeze, Shane O'Neill's would be looking to get another four or five of them on board very quickly, I would imagine. And of course, St. Peter's, they're managed by Ronan Michael Linton, a ported down man. Again, we look the way the ball just drops dead. Finden comes in, he picks that ball up. He had some year for Armagh this year. The ball, he gave that ball away and it's picked up this time by... McCabe, McCabe launches it down into space, but uh, Shane O'Neill's had everybody up. And we look down there, we see also that St. Peter's have the sweeper in there, John Joe. Yeah, they have the sweeper in. They played that ball in through to Paul O'Rourke there, number 18. Just didn't have the height to take it, but you can see what they're doing into that corner. That's three balls that have been in straight into that corner, so that's maybe where they're going to attack from. Well, if, if, if it was me, I would be having them standing on the edge of the big square and just get the ball in on top of them and see what happens. The ball's coming out again. 
broken down. McCabe comes in, he's pulled to the ground, and we'll see Macken coming out again for this one because, he, and that's exactly what he's doing. He's running out. Well, he's calling for the quick free. So the referee says, no, leave it. Greg McCabe's got it in his hands. Greg McCabe gives it into Kieran Macken. Kieran Macken gives a small inside pass here to McCabe. McCabe slips on the ground, the ball drops. Well, he put his hand that, the ball was on the ground and it's picked up by McCabe again. Greg driving forward, he offloads the pass. A chance here for McCabe, but McCabe pulls that one and it went to the left and wide. Yeah, McCabe, he just knew, but he, as soon as he had hit it, he knew he just hadn't put the right power on it and the direction, but good tackling coming in from St. Peter's, but the wind's having a massive effect here. The ball's been kicked out and coming up to the 45 and just stopping. It just stops and drops straight down. It's like an invisible wall. If you were watching that, uh, the, 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 the science fiction programme, The Dome, it looks as if it was just hitting the dome and coming down. So again, as we look, starting to drop now. Fendon's underneath it and Shane O'Neill's punching it away, but St. Peter's get the brick ball. And now this allows St. Peter's to get the ball up into the forward division. And a chance here, but a good tackling there from the rear guard of Shane O'Neill's. But this now allows Br St. Peter's to drive up and McConville's got the ball, there's two men chasing him, he's got the ball, he wants past two, three men, he's going forward, the referee says play on, gives the advantage, the ball is put out, the referee's going to call the ball back here, and Dan McConville is the go-to player for St Peter's in the forward division. Yeah, very much so, he got it there, he, he, he tipped here four good tackles, but the, the main man just blocked his path, and the referee gave the advantage, left it on to Fergal Moore to see if he could do anything, but Fergal just was tackled again, so the referee's brought it back to Ornelas, again a scoring position, might be able to level it here. Well, this is a chance. It's not that far out. And McConville's going to be hitting this. He's going to be hitting it off the ground. So, it's hard enough. No, he lifts it up. He's going to be kicking out of his hands now. He thought he was going to be taking it off the ground. And he's telling the referee that the Shane O'Neill's player is too close to him. So, the Shane O'Neill's player backs off another couple of feet. So, McConville takes his time slightly to the left-hand side of the Dalton Road goals. Goes forward, puts it up in the air and does he nail this one he absolutely nails it super score from the boot of McConville yeah great score from Niall McConville there as I say not, not under pressure but took it well into that win again sometimes you don't know whether off the ground is better but obviously out of his hands he knew what he was doing short kick out by the keeper to Peter O'Brien so O'Brien gets that pass back here so this now allows the corner man Boyle coming forward pushing it past all over the far side and this time the ball comes back into McPo to Morgan Nathan Morgan, Nathan Morgan offloads the pass. It goes back this time to Mark Christian McGill. Christian McGill. Ball is broken down now. St. Peter's driving forward. The ball is pushed up towards McConville. McConville comes out. Well, he's been pulled to the ground there, but the referee says play on. Finden gathers the ball up and tackles three players, two players round. The big man from St. Peter's. Referee has indicated that he overcooked the ball there. And, uh, well, so the ball is given away down here. Chance here for Shane O'Neill's, but... Again, the ball too far ahead. The ball comes back inside this time to McDonald. Rory McDonald, he pushes the ball inside, looking for the return pass, but he doesn't get it. Holding on, and this time it comes back to McGavigan. McGavigan goes up the middle, hand to toe, hand to toe again, and he's going to pull the trigger. He goes on the outside, looking for the runner now, and again, great block down there. The wing half back there, O'Brien trying to get the ball in, but it was blocked. So again, this now allows Shin and Eels, and they should be just pushing this ball all the way down but again their tactics is not working here Shane O'Neill's have only one man in the whole inside in their own division whereas you would think John Joe that they would have maybe two or three players with this breeze yeah that's happened in the last play as well but they're moving this on there's a Emily Hawkins made his whole way back he took that shot there referee's given a free and the ball comes into Cork which the referee says let's get on with the game here so the free was taken this allows St Peter's coming from the half back line away over on the far side very very close to the, the line over there and that's in the hands of Niall Creaney way over on the far side hand to toe cutting on the inside going past two players three players he's gone past stretching out offloads the ball to McConville McConville comes out looking for the ball gives it away into the corner man this time it goes into Moore away over on the far side back out so St Peter's just holding on to the ball there's two options here it's coming from the wing half back the wing half back Emmett Hawking Hawking gives the pass inside and a chance here now it comes the wing half forward the wing half forward this time is McDonald goes outside checks on the inside on the right foot and that's a super score yeah great score from Rear McDonald he scored a couple of great goals on points for our man Miners whenever he was one but there's a great score from Rear number 12 so that's St Peter's go one ahead here 15 minutes or uh, 12 minutes and 54 seconds gone the game Shane O'Neill's pushing it out this time way out to the far side to Park Hill 
Helen gets the ball and he's looking for runners, but Shane O'Neill's are behind here. And again, as I look down the field, they've only one man right on the square here and nobody else. Now they start to move into play. So Shane O'Neill's, they, they should be using this advantage here, trying to kick it long. And there's nobody there, so Macken has to go back. It goes back this time to O'Rourke. O'Rourke puts it away over on the far side. This time it comes over to Brady. Brady gathers out with Michael Brady. Michael Brady, there's two men chasing him. Checks on the inside. His jersey's been pulled. The referee has said, your jersey's been pulled. And now it's a free and Macken will come. And Macken would probably have a chance of putting this over. But when you look out here, John Joe, there is nobody on the right-hand side of the Shane O'Neill's forward division. Not one player. Not even a St. Peter's player. No, completely empty there and about on one team in an attack. As you say, using that win, dropping the ball into the house or trying to get it over the bar from a distance seems to be the way. You want to be going in 4 or 5 in the lead, but this man's good kick on him. Connor Mackin again. So Mackin takes his time and again, more or less from the same position where he was earlier on. Just a little bit closer. Puts this one up in the air and he pulls it to the right and wide. And again, it's to do with the breeze. There's no question about that. He should be going for the left hand post. I thought maybe he learned his lesson after the last one, but again, the wind conditions might be changing. It's different up here than no. it is down there. But No, I was out on the field earlier on there, and the breeze is blowing slightly to the right of the goals. Yeah, and if you, look, you can see from the flags there on, on, the, on your picture, you know, there is a very strong breeze blowing now towards the cathedral. Again, look at this here. The ball is kicked short. This time it comes low, and this allows St. Peter's. Hawking gets the ball, puts the ball back into that man that scored the point a minute ago, and that's McDonald going up the field. Gets a little bit of space. There's a man on the inside. Gives it back. There's still a man on the other side. There's a man on overlap now. He goes out now. This time St. Peter's going forward. Back to the big man, Finden. Way over on the far side. putting the, He's looking for the return pass, but he doesn't get it. This time the wing half back comes forward. McCormick. McCormick puts that one up in the air, and it's going high. Dropping down, three, four players going for it, but Shane O'Neill's looked after that one and out to come with the ball, driving forward. Referee says play on, no fouls here. Shane O'Neill's have a man on the outside, the wing half back, the wing half back is Peter O'Brien. Peter O'Brien cuts on the inside, gives the ball back out here to McCabe. McCabe, Eamon McCabe from the quarter road, just in, as you come into Camilla there, driving forward. Gets the pass inside, going looking for the return pass. McCabe has the ball. Driving forward, David McCabe looking one way, looking the other. Gives the pass now, he's looking for the return pass, he doesn't get it. And this time, this will allow Shane O'Neill to get the ball in. But again, Mackin, there's one, two men in front of him there, centre half back for St. Peter's. Geary gets that ball out, and this allows St. Peter's. St. Peter's coming out here, tackles coming in here, there's a wild tackle. Referee says play on. So this time, the corner man, the corner man is McCabe, away over on the far side. Or, Pushing the ball inside, very, very tight, very congested. This time the corner man comes out, Clark. Clark's going forward, pushing that ball away at this time to Flanagan, away over on the far side. The corner man comes out, the corner man this time is Garrity. Away out there, pushing it inside. Again, the ball's hanging up, way down towards the corner man. The corner man is Moore. Moore gets it up, but he's been pushed over the line. Brian Canavan's pointing the, f the flag down there, and the referee's agreeing with him, and that looked to be a push from here, but it's a flying ball for Shane O'Neill's. Yeah, Brian's holding just about holding on to that flag, so you can see how strong the actual wind is in that level. But it was one of those things, he just Fergal Muir was put out over the lane, just didn't have enough support around him just to lay that ball off. Yeah, so Shane O'Neill's now have another player in on the square here. Again, very tight, very congested over on the far side, coming down the field with the ball. A chance for the men from Camler to get the ball down the field. The referee has said that's a free, and... Uh, Sent the half forward for St. Peter's. Hurt himself there. He's down injured. But Mackin has the ball. He's driving forward. He offloads the pass now. And a tackle's coming in here. A chance here for the big midfielder for Shane O'Neill's. Feehan puts it up in the air and puts it over the bar. Yeah, a great score for Mark Feehan there. I thought maybe the referee would have stopped it off there. But hey, because young Niall Craney was down. But he let the game go on. And we'll see from that. A great result, Mark Feehan. From that far side, he knew what way the wind was blowing. Stayed over the black spot. So the referee's going to stop the game. And the way this game has panned out, it's only two apiece, 17 minutes and two seconds gone. So it would be the team that's playing down the field would like to be maybe three or four or five points ahead. That's for sure. I know sometimes the breeze doesn't help, but uh, I always think that if you can play with the breeze, it's a good advantage. Yeah, we're just checking ways out. There's three ways. We're going possessions. The possessions are with just the statistics there before the thing, before the keeper kicks it out. Shane O'Neill's 11, 11 possessions. Attacks, both of nine had, had nine attacks. Shots on target. There's a six for St. Peter's, seven for Shane O'Neill. Scores, as I say, two each. Productivity's 1.9. Just the possession and the scores and the kickouts. St. Peter's have uh, retrieved five and uh, Shane O'Neill's down to one. 
again, level. but everything looks quite level from then on in. Yeah, so thanks to BMAG for all those statistics. Yeah, it looks like Niall Crane is still getting a bit of tension over the far side. He's taking his time, maybe stretching that out. Didn't really see what happened, but just landed awkwardly. Well, I see Eddie Hill now, the, the legendary Eddie Hill. <laughs> Gets a thumbs up, Damien. Yeah, yeah. Eddie never misses an Armagh match, no matter what part of Ireland it's in, he's there. So Ad Addy, Addy, Addy's showing his colours today. He's supporting Cross McGlenn. I thought that was a Damien McCullough t-shirt there that they had on there, but no. So Eddie's supporting Cross McGlenn today. You heard it here first on Linwood's live Armagh TV. Eddie Hill is down supporting Cross McGlenn. So the ball is kicked and we look out. The ball just drops straight down. And it's very, very hard. A chance here. And that ball is up in the air by Macken. But that's a Holy Mary ball. Up it goes. And this time it goes to the right and wide. And uh, I would say Shane O'Neill's need to settle down here with this breeze. You know, they're taking snapshots, John Joe, and it's not they're getting nothing out of them. No, and they are getting within range to point them, but it just happens to be a wee bit expensive at the moment with five wides for uh, Shane O'Neill's. Again, the ball is kicked, but it doesn't even meet, It doesn't even get past the 30-metre line over on the far side. A little bit of a push over on the far side. The referee has indicated that that's a free play on. The ball comes out this time, sent the half back. Geary going up the field with the ball, looking for the runners now. But there's nobody coming forward. It puts a high hand pass in. That looked to be a little bit of a push, but he gets away with that one. And then he gets clipped from behind. The referee says that's a free. And this allows St. Peter's to get a shot on target here, I would imagine. Yeah, Eamon would be proud to say in that one. He learned that wee move. They've always had that wee move between them. And again, the smaller man taking on the bigger man. He just knows to duck down in behind him. But he just had the speed. And Niall McConville's got the ball in his hands from the far side. Yeah, very fractured sort of a game here. No pattern both teams haven't really settled here. Maybe it's to do with the conditions. It's very much reminds me of the Bally McNabb Mahari game. It never really took off. It just sort of kept going. It was intense for the guys that are out there playing. McConville hits this one. McConville puts this one up in the air and a strap and down. But as we look at the breeze there, it just totally never even got anywhere near the goals. So again, a chance, but it didn't happen. So this now allows Connor Ruddy. So I know Pat McGinn, the, the famous man from Camelot, he's overrunning the Jersey Marathon and if he's tuned in, Pat, you're very welcome to Linwood's Armagh TV. So O'Brien going forward with the ball. He's looking for the runners, but he nearly drops the ball, checks on the inside, gives the ball on the outside now, back inside to Macken. Macken gathers it to the second attempt and he gets pushed to the ground and that's definitely, well, that should have been a free. The referee stops the game and Macken got, got injured there, so they're calling over the physios yeah the referee's calling back there might be a blood sub hold on the referee's having a word for them <laughs> well Kieran's not too happy with the referee that's for sure <laughs> and uh, is it a blood sub we're not sure yet but the conditions are very very windy there's a strong breeze blowing towards the cathedral end here in the ecclesiastical capital of Ireland where we have uh, Linwood's Armagh TV bringing you the Cormac Leonard sponsored championship here this afternoon and later on, Cross McGlenn takes on Cully Hanna, the Battle of South Armagh. You can talk about the battle up in Las Vegas last night or this morning, but we have a battle royale coming up later on between Cully Hanna, St. Pat's and Cross McGlenn Rangers. So Macken again, well within his range, but this time I wonder will he have learned, will he look for the left post and hopefully target the left post and let the wind just carry it? Well... We wait to see. The referee says, let's get on with the game here, lads. So Macken's taking his time. Hits this one up in the air. And again, same, same result, right-hand post. So Macken's target radar isn't on target, that's for sure. And that could have been two or three scores that Shane O'Neill's could have had on the board. But it's all square. 2-2 two -two here, 22 minutes gone. Very low scoring. Semi-final of the Intermediate Championship 2018 here in the Athletic Grounds in Armagh. And of course you can read all about this in the local papers this week and everything, but you get it live here on Linwood's Armour TV. Oh, there's a huge big hit there. And the big man goes down injured and he's hurt himself. And the referee stops the game, and he got a bad enough fall there as he hit the ground. I just Kieran nodded the score yeah. on his back. Hopefully yeah. he'll be all right. You know, I nearly felt that myself uh, sitting up here, and I'm rubbing my back <laughs> just as a look out. So hopefully he'll be okay. But the conditions are definitely not making this game easy for both teams. 
and the breeze seems to be picking up if anything. And there's that wee bit of dampness too, Damon, about that also makes the ball quite slippy for those guys. So whenever it's actually hitting the ground, it's skidding more than bouncing. But that was a big, big... He came down from some height there, just out straight, straight on his back. Hopefully he'll be all right. He was moving about. Well, that's where you have to have the, the old Morphe gloves, John Joe, because uh, you get the Morphe gloves, they can catch anything and they can hold on to anything. And if you had a pair of them, you would be catching the ball, that's for sure. There was some collector's edition about last year, but we haven't seen them so far this year. Yeah, we and thanks to Kieran, he, de he definitely gave his Linwoods gloves last year and they went to America and they went to Australia and they went all over the place McCabe has got the ball he's going on the outside he offloads the pass this time Shane O'Neill's going forward a chance here for Fehan gets it back chance here tackles coming in pushes it all the way back to the wing half forward the wing half forward puts on his left foot puts it up in the air and again another wide and that was from Christian McGill and McGill would be definitely he would be annoyed at himself because he would be thinking he should be able to hit them scores yeah I was just checking on the stats there to see the wides but I have it down to six for Shane O'Neill's so that's quite expensive for them. If they were going in four points ahead of this first half, 24 minutes gone, they'd be a wee bit more comfortable. But the rain's coming over the hill. We can see it coming. Ball is dropping down now. Fintan gathers the ball up, gives this time out to wing half forward. Rory McDonald. There's nobody near him, but there's two Shin O'Neill's men chasing after him. McDonald's going on the outside, looking for the runner. Still going with the ball. Cuts inside, offloads the pass to McConville. And that ball was just on top of the daisies there. McConville was pulled there. And there was four Shin O'Neill's men after him. Pushed to the ground. And... Uh, he just caught that ball just above the length of the grass. The boy says it was a lift ball, but it looked to be just above the grass level here. And the grass level is very, very low in the athletic grounds. But he held on to it, and he won the free. A great run from Rory McDonald there, number 12, as I said. He came up the wing, and he shed, laid it off to Shea Gerrity and back into McConville's hands. So he's going to hit this one out of the hands again. He's already scored one from nearly the exact position before. So when this ball leaves his foot, he should be just crossing slightly the arc of the D there as we look down at it. So now McConville... Very experienced footballer. Going forward. Puts it up in the air. Does he get it? And he pulls it again. The breeze is doing that because that's the direction the breeze is blowing. So there we have the McCullers all in. There's big Paddy McCullough. He was playing football in Australia this time last year. And now he's back here in Armagh. And there's the rain on Damien. It's coming in sheets, as they say. And he's getting married next May. The ball is kicked long. Down, down. And what a pick in the clouds there. That's some catch there by big Mark Feakin. Mark Feakin puts it over to O'Brien. O'Brien pushes it down, all the way down towards... There's the Mahri men in too. They wouldn't be very happy here. David McCabe trying to get the ball up. Gets it up at the second attempt. Spins round, turns round on a sixpence. What a <laughs> score from David McCabe. Score of the game, that's for sure. What an absolute cracking score from the boot of big David McCabe. Yeah, goal of the game. Quite of the game, as I say, but the win's coming in now even stronger and the rain's coming in so it'll be interesting to see some of the players still out there with no gloves on well as a coach you would always be saying lads be prepared you need to you absolutely need gloves that's for sure the ball is kicked out here coming down and over the top breaks into space and the ball comes out and O'Brien lets that ball slip kicks it down the line down the line towards Mack and Mack and gathers that one he's going on the outside Han he puts it out and a good defending there by St Peter's Back to, well, Mackin still has it along the line. He's going across, and he's going to pull the trigger here. Great effort there, and the ball almost went into the goals there, but it's gone out to the wide, and that was a chance. Mackin probably would have been better just fisting that over the bar. Yeah, he should have took a score there, as I say, but they've gone wide. The referees said, no, yeah, it's a wide ball. I thought maybe the referee had signaled for a 45, but they'd be disappointed in that one because they'd done everything, and they'd walked in from that corner. There's no question. The breeze has definitely picked up, and it's getting very like a little bit of rain here in the ecclesiastical capital. As we look out here from the press box, last night we couldn't see out, and today we're saying, thank God we're in here. <laughs> it's that sort of a day. The ball is chipped out and over the top, and Hawkins trying to get his hands in this one. It bounces, and he gathers it up. He spins around one way, goes around the other way, looking for the somebody to run, and he still has his hands in the ball. The referee says, uh, you were fouled there. And uh, oh, McCabe there now, Ooh. a little bit of petulance by Eamon McCabe, but he needs to settle down. Hawking has the ball, Hawking gives it across. This time, two Shane O'Neill's players comes after the St. Peter's man with the ball. He's holding on to it, under a lot of pressure, the ball drops. Corner, wing half back, wing back, McCabe gets it, gives it out on the far side. This now allows the corner man, the corner man Clark, going up the far side with the ball. Over into the, Kerry, he's back playing back in defence this time the ball goes down along the line and again no pattern of play here just trying to get the ball up the field 27 and a half minutes gone yeah it's into that wind they just don't really know what to do or how to handle it probably the first time but they're seeing the are on the attack so we'll be dropping a few more in with a couple of minutes to go here 
Yeah, D- Brian, Peter O'Brien going forward. Peter O'Brien, he needs to be pushing this one in, and that's exactly what it is. He goes down towards O'Rourke. Well, O'Rourke was very, very fortunate to get that one. I would say he probably more stumbled than got pushed there, but this now will allow Macken to put this one over the bar if he's coming looking for it. And, uh, well, it's not Macken going to be hitting it. It's going to be O'Rourke. It's going to be Paul O'Rourke. And Paul... He was cute there, Damon. Oh, absolutely. He used all his experience to get that free in his lime green boots here. And he's going to be kicking this one. See, can he get it over the bar? And you can see from the way the flags were blowing, the direction of the wind, left footed. And that's exactly what he done. He picked the position. He knew what he was doing. He was going for the left post. And he picked that out. And the ball sails over the bar. So that's a good score from the boot of Paul O'Rourke. Shane O'Neill's now have gone four to two double scores but there's only 28 minutes and a half gone there's only four points to two nothing in this game here in the first half live on Linwood's Armagh TV and the referee says that's a free and of course this competition is sponsored by Cormac Leonard commercials and the ball comes back all the way over this time too St Peter's coming up the field with the ball holding on to the ball looking for the runner now McGavigan checking one way checking the other there's a man on the outside but he holds on to the ball So McGavigan puts it up well as a high loop and pass over on the far side to the wing half back. The wing half back that time is McCormick. McCormick gives the ball into Finden. Finden's been held, but he's going forward with the ball, hand to toe, driving up the field. Checking one with a good tackling there by the midfielder from Shane O'Neill's putting the big man from St. Peter's under pressure. But Finden gets the ball. Again, McCabe comes in, and once you start coming in, tackling from behind like that, the referee will automatically give the free, McConville comes out, Hawking comes up, he's on his own, he gets the ball, he's looking forward, he gives it along towards the corner here, a chance here for St Peter's to get the ball out, out to McDonnell, he goes on the outside, he's going to check on the inside now, going along the end line, checking one way, going forward, puts a little daisy cutter across, again, great hands there by the St Peter's man, trying to get himself into the scoring range, but Hawking didn't take the shot, he had a chance there, the ball is up in the air, and the ball is over the bar, that's a super score there, from the corner man, the corner forward, and that was Shea Garrity, and that's a super point. Yeah, great score from Shea there, but as in, they were going for goal, I think, at one stage, they were thinking about it, but they're just, Ronan McAllen, screaming like, man, keep the ball down this side, so we can see what he wants to do, he wants to get the ball in low to their well, forward. We're into injury time, we don't know how many additional minutes has been called here, great catch there by Mack, and drop down, offloaded the pass the ball is broken out McConville gets it up so this time this allows now St Peter's to drive forward McConville has the ball now Hawking is looking for the return pass he gets the return pass McConville tries to run forward but he's been held but he gets it oh, now he sprints forward with the ball three Shinanese players after him the referee has given the free the jersey's been pulled and there's only one point between them this now will mean that Shinanese could possibly get in maybe a point ahead or level and with that strong breeze the advantage would definitely be with St Peter's with this strong breeze blowing down the field yeah now I'm going very strong through three Shane O'Neill players there but in the last one just took him down and one of the guys landed on the back of his head as he hit the deck so that's why he's getting a bit of attention here but great work from St Peter's in the last couple of minutes no question and we look down here the breeze definitely is picking up So it looks like if Hawking's going to be kicking this one, but the linesman goes back and he says that's where the free is. So definitely the, the lack of a chance for a score here is too far out. So they'll be looking for somebody to become running. And this time the ball goes back to Kieran McGavigan. McGavigan's going forward. Hawking's on the inside. He's going to get the return pass and he gets the pass. He looks inside. He gets a little bit of a shoulder. He's going across. Three men chasing after him. Still holding on to the ball. Gives this time out to Clark. Clark drives forward looking for the runner. Comes all the way back to the wing half back. Wing half back that time is McCormick. McCormick goes past. Two men pushing the ball away out to the far side. And look who's on the ball. Ball is up and they are dropping short here. But again, well defended. But a chance here off the ground. Soccer along the ground. Oh, and the ball almost hit the back of the net there the referee is he given advantage here he's given a free in here for the free or for the foul that was committed and I would say this ball will be slipped over the bar and it'll be all square it'll be four pieces at half time yeah one McCormick's down there getting a bit of attention where he's land he was a man hit the ball hard and low along the ground we've seen those going into the back of net that one was just slightly to the left of the post as we looking from the goalkeeper's point of view but no time left there was three minutes I saw it coming up on the clock we're now 32 and a half so we'll see uh, well it's not it's a 45 we're, we both got that wrong we thought it was a free it's a 45 so and everybody in the press box is looking very mystified at that call uh, we thought it was a free in oh the Gaelic Life says the keeper saved it but earlier on they says it was a free so they don't know you know even the Newry Democrat doesn't know what happened here as well so 
we just wait now for the outcome of this 45 and I would say once this 45 is kicked depending on who gets the ball it'll be either half time or whatever so big man from St Peter's is up so it'll be interesting Damon as I say this one level it for half time don't think so John Joyce too far out with that breeze and if he gets it it would be a super score but I don't think so I think it'll drop short but I've been wrong before Maybe time for a reset play. You never know what they've got. Some man running up front. Yeah, the young the lads giving Damien the thumbs up as they're walking past. Comes all the Kruppen lads. So hockey on the 45. Driving forward. Puts this one up in the air. And gets the distance. But he doesn't get the direction. So it was wide. And it's three points to St. Peter's. Four points to Shin and Eels. 33 and 30 seconds gone. So maybe the referee's playing four minutes. So we wait. Now we wait for Ruddy to kick this out. Drives it out 40 yards, 50 yards, coming out 70 yards, bounces off the surface, driving forward. Finden gathers that one up, spins round with the ball. McCabe is after him, but Finden goes hand to toe. There's a man on the inside, he gets the pass now. Cornerman, Clark going forward with the ball, pushing it out on the far side, this time way over to the centre three quarters. Craney coming back to Finden. Finden gathers the ball, McConville comes looking for this one. McConville's back in his own half of the field, driving forward. Hawkins over on the far side, waiting on the return pass, but McConville gives it to Hawkins now, but it comes off his arm, pushing along the line, gathers it up two Shane and Eels players around him Hockey goes on the outside he's been fouled the referee says that's a free and Hockey got the free there so McConville comes over gives it back to Hockey and Hockey gathers the ball up he's looking for a runner coming now and this time the ball comes all the way back to Finn and the referee blows the whistle and the half time score here is Shane O'Neill's four points and St Peter's three points very very fractured first half here not much uh, fluence of football but I would say coming in here now St Peter's will probably be saying okay lads we're a point down but we've got a very strong breeze yeah you'd have to say so and especially with the way the corner forward Shea Gerdy and Al McConville and Fergal Moore are playing for St Peter's in close, close against the, the, the goals Shane O'Neill's are playing the ball a lot wider and depending on their number 11 Connor Mackin to score from the outside but he just missed a couple they've had six wides well, there we go at half time. The half time score is Shane O'Neill's four points, St. Peter's three points. St. Peter's playing against a very strong breeze. They will have the elements with them in the second half. Sometimes they say that that works for you, sometimes it doesn't. But an experienced team like St. Peter's, I would say they'll be coming in and they'll be very confident coming in through the door at half time there. Shane O'Neill's have a lot of work to do for the second half. So we'll take a wee break and we'll be back very, very shortly.
not to leave it. Not a bit hard. No, 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 not to leave it. No, no, no.
program, the teams are back out on the field. We would therefore ask that all the young people leave the pitch immediately. Please leave immediately as the teams are back out on the field. Well, you're very welcome back to the Athletic Ground. Shane O'Neill's have come onto the pitch. I was outside the halftime, and there is a very, very strong breeze. It's unbelievable. Yeah, it's down to that level, even down to the pitch level. You can really see it if you look at the linesmen's flags whenever they come on, or even the flags along the post. Green Moore and the Camogie against Balahi have gone into extra time. Tight game in Green Moor. We'll keep you posting that result as it comes in. Yeah, we're well just looking down here. Shane O'Neill's are out early there, up for it, obviously in the second half. But the referee's not even out yet. Nor well, it's going Peters. to be it's going to be a huge half here for Shane O'Neill's playing again. The breeze, St Peter's probably. If I was St Peter's, I'd be quietly confident coming in there with this breeze, and uh, I would be really, really exciting here. I'd put Finden on the square, and I'd be putting the big ball in and have him. Brand Mallon says that's not a bad idea. Brand knows his football, that's for sure. Now he's a poor down man with a poor down referee and poor down managers are all over the place in the lake. Well that's what I'd be doing. I, 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 you know, I would try that for five minutes at the start of the half to see how it goes. And of course we know from an RMA point of view how good that man is in there. He's in on the square. There's Jim Bourne, the man that refereed the match here last night, the junior final last night. He's just arrived in here to watch the game. So the referee now has gone out. Yeah, we're just waiting for the umpires, but a big crowd coming here into the athletics ground as they say there's a double header today. Shane O'Neill and St Peter's and Cross McLean and Cully Hanna throw ins at five o'clock. And we're waiting for that game. You think it was bad last night in uh, Vegas? Well, the action's all going to be here in the athletic grounds and we're looking forward to a cracking game of football, that's for sure. People were spending thousands and thousands of dollars to get to the game in Vegas last night, the fight in Vegas last night for I think ten pound here this afternoon. You can come in and see a cracking game of football here this afternoon. You would get two games, and of course, if you really want to stay at home, you can pay five pound to watch the game live on Linwood's Arma TV. Yeah, and we've got some great stats here from BMAC. As I say, eighteen possessions, so everything's equal on that side. The uh, attacks fifteen apiece and shots twelve apiece. So we're just going to go down to the scoring and shoot, shooting. There's too many wides. Shots from play seven, shots from, from a set piece five in favour of uh, St Peter's and four in favour of uh, Shane O'Neill's is a substitution here number two's on for 15 we can't work out which team it is yet but we'll be able to keep you up no there's number two's coming on for St Peter's there must be a change in the Shane O'Neill team well we'll wait to see who's coming in for Shane O'Neill's 25 has already been in yeah. 15 so in comes Mark McCabe Mark McCabe has come into the game and Mark McCabe well I'm surprised he didn't actually start the game there so he's in and out comes uh, David Boyle. So Shane O'Neill will be doing a little bit of jigging because uh, Mark McCabe is coming in as a forward, that's for sure. And we look down here, and McConville's in on the square, Fendon's in the middle of the field, and the goalkeeper runs all the way up to the top left-hand side here to get to the goal. So we wait to see how this game pans out in the next five minutes. Fairly crucial how both teams settle down for the next five to ten minutes. The referee gets his watches into motion here and he looks round and he says yep yeah, everybody's good to go here so the game is on the ball oh, he, that's a very low throw up there that's for sure Finden just caught that it was just gone up Finden driving forward this time Gavick and putting it in towards McConville McConville comes out spins round drops the ball gets it the second attempt well he's been pushed to the ground there the referee says no free he was looking for the free there he didn't get it the ball comes out to the corner man very very tight in there Tigers tackling there by Shane O'Neill's and I would say this could be a free out now but out comes Shane O'Neill's and that time hockey and pull the wing half forward to the ground McCabe to the ground McCabe was cute enough and he's well experienced to hold on to that ball and uh, the referee just says hold on a minute McConville got a little little bit of uh, attention in the tackle there, there was about four men on him and the referee's talking to him and it comes to physio, so Shane O'Neill's definitely, they're gonna up, they have upped the intensity in the tackle. Oh very much so, there was three men come in on Shea, Shea Gerrity there but Shea tried his best but just Shane O'Neill's got the ball back but McConville's looking at him, it seems like got a dig at the sort of in round the nose there, he's sort of punching at it or looking at it but 
There's definitely no blood there. Leon's just waiting for the match to restart. Well, the breeze is definitely, and you, breeze is definitely picking up. That's for sure. So the referee's just waiting to make sure that everybody's good to go here. And that's, that's a good day for the lonesome boatman, that's for sure. Gregory McCabe with this one. So McCabe, well, there's nobody there's nobody looking. Oh, the referee's hopping the ball up. McCabe, well, he nobody moved for him and he had to kick the ball and he probably would have been better just doing that earlier on because now this gives St. Peter's a chance and in goes the, the two big men. We'll be jumping for this one. Yeah, big iron in there, ready for it. We'll see how high he throws this one up this time. So two big men, both the same size, jumping for this ball. And the referee actually said, if everybody outside a 13 metre zone there, but that ball was picked out by Shane O'Neill's giving away. Shane O'Neill's driving up the field here. Santa half back drops the ball, gets it up well. He leans over the ball. The referee says, play on. No, it's a free here. So Kieran Mackin's got the ball. Kieran Mackin gives it over to his older brother, Connor. Connor gives it inside. And this time, Fakin goes round. Mark going forward. He's waiting for the runner. He's waiting for McKay, but he still holds the ball. Going to wait on the far side, waiting for the runner now. He comes back. And that's Mack and the tackle's coming in. He offloads the pass, looking for the foul. He didn't get it. He's on the ground. He's getting up now. The ball comes back inside this time to Christian McGill. Christian McGill offloads the pass on the far side. The ball is dropped. And this now allows Mark McCabe to drop that ball. This now allows St. Peter's to get the ball. Referee has been playing advantage there. And there's been a lot of holding. And, and silly fouls been given away here. Yeah, whenever the players get in close, there seems to be a lot of grabbing and stuff. But the players, the ball's back in action. Fenton with it. Yeah, Fenton kicks the ball down towards McConville. The ball skids off the surface. We've seen this in the first half, coming all the way down into the corner there. McCon well, that's not McConville, that's, that's Mc the corner. Gary that's, Day. Yeah, gets the ball, and the Brian Calvin said the ball has gone out. Yeah, I think the ball just did travel over the line, but he's given it, played it on anyway. Well, the referee says play on. McConville gathers that ball up. The second attempt, There's two men round him, looking for a little bit of space, gives the pass out to Hockey, and Hockey, and he, he's a wing half back, but he doesn't play in a wing half back position. Goes forward, puts a high pass into Finden. Finden puts this one up on the air, and the ball is coming out, and the goalkeeper comes out. The goalkeeper would have been better. Ruddy would have been better letting that go out, but he gets it up down in the corner, picks it up in the second attempt. He's getting a lot of attention there. He drops the ball, but it's picked up by Shane O'Neill. He's coming up the left-hand side with the ball. Back into McCabe. McCabe's coming forward. Hawkins holding on to him. The referee says that's a free, and the referee says just settle down, lads. Let's settle down here. Play a little bit of football. So again, these passes very, very short. Mark Ficken gathers that ball, driving forward out to Kieran Mack, and Kieran Mack comes off his head. But in comes Finden. Finden gathers that one up, and he's looking for the forward inside. It goes broken down. But again, St. Peter's thinking a wee bit ahead of themselves there. Shane O'Neill's driving up the field, little bit of a tug in the foot there, and the referee says that's a free, and that free was given away by Owen McCormick. So Connor Mack just says saddle down. Peter O'Brien comes out to the left-hand side here. Kieran Mackin's over on the far side. There's nobody on him. And again, it goes to the centre half-back. The centre half-back is Helen. Helen's looking for the runner now. The runner comes from Mackin. Mackin gathers that ball up. And he's looking for more runners coming on the inside. But there's nobody coming now. McCabe goes on the inside past the referee. Mackin goes past. And he's been fouled. The referee says, that's a foul. And Finton looks at the referee and says, that wasn't a foul. But the referee says, it is. And now this gives Mackin a chance, and this is within his range. There's no question about that. But with the breeze blowing, can he nail it? We've seen from the last couple of tacks up there with free kicks, they've gone to the left and to the right. So Connor Mackin will be taking a shot here. It's four to three in favour of the men from Kamla. So Connor Mackin sets the ball down, steps right back, and takes his time. Strikes it off the ground and he strikes it lovely. The ball has gone over the bar and that's a super score from the boot of Connor Mackin. Yeah, great score into that wind. Second score, second free. There's a substitute coming in here. Brian Canavan raises the flag here. There's a substitute coming in, but we don't see who it is or has he gone on. No, he's taken off his top now. Last night we've seen a little bit of petulance between two teams last night about wearing bibs and different things. St. Peter's are bringing a substitution in now. St. Peter's bringing in number 10 and that's Darren Moore Darren Moore comes into the game not sure who's coming off yes, number, 25, number 25 so the man that replaced him comes off so O'Neill comes off and Moore goes in Caelan O'Neill comes off 
and in goes Darren Moore, the man that was wearing number 10. So the ball is kicked long, down. Comes off somebody's shin, Mack and puts his foot and knocks it over the line. And that's a line ball for St. Peter's just below us here. And the right just below us here. So the ball is kicked, going to be kicked long here by the man wearing number 11, Craney. Gives it back. And Craney's looking for the return pass. Gives that ball inside to McGavigan. McGavigan gives it back in. He's looking for the return pass. Going forward, puts it up in the air. This ball's going across. A chance here. Ball breaks down, but Shane O'Neill's got their hands on that. Out comes the wing half back. The wing half back is Brady. Mihal Brady, the ball is dropped. Macken picks it up. There's two men chasing after him. Macken driving out, pulled to the ground. The referee has indicated that that's a free. That's Mark Feagan. It's not Macken. Macken's wearing white boots, and Feagan isn't. So Shane O'Neill's defending. The ball goes all the way back to the full back this time. Shane O'Neill's coming out with the ball. McParland. Away in the far side. Chanel's having to walk awful hard. That looked to be nearly be two bounces there, but gets away with it. Feehan offloads the pass this time. Shane O'Neill's driving up the field with Brady. Brady goes on the inside, gives it to Mackin. Mackin's pushed out. Mackin's looking for the runner, but he comes across the field with the ball. Hand it to, gives the pass inside this time. Again to Greg McCabe. Greg McCabe has been very quiet here in the game. He's starting to open up now. There's two men after him. McCabe goes with the ball, drops it. Ball's on the ground, picked up by... Finden driving forward with the ball. Three men tra- tackling him there. And the two county men lying on the ground. The referee has indicated that that's a free. And St. Peter's have McConville down in the square. Shane O'Neill's have a man just sitting in, sweeping in front of him. Yeah, the seven minutes gone. It's uh, St. Peter's three, Shane O'Neill's five. Only one point in the second half in the first seven minutes. Very similar to the first half. So St. Peter's trying to get the ball down towards the scoring zone. Ball comes out this time to McCormick. McCormick gives it down into the corner. But again, as we've seen in the first half, the ball overcooks, gets off the surface and goes out wide. So St. Peter's haven't mastered the, the wind at this stage, that's for sure. No, I think there's a wee change there too in the St. Peter's lineup. Oh, and McCormick's moved in to half forward. Seems to be going man Morgan. So wait for this ball to be kicked out. Again, as we've seen in the first half, the ball goes so far, drops down. But Finden went for that one, reached for it, missed it, and it came over his head. And it, O'Brien Cadman has given the line ball now to Shane uh, O'Neill's. Finden must have just got his fingertips on the ball, that's for sure. So they go forward here. Feehan offloads the pass. Oh. Mackin slips again, and he gets the, gathers the ball out to his younger brother, Kieran. Kieran goes up the left hand side. There's nobody near Kieran Mackin. He's going forward. David McCabe's in the inside line looking for the ball. The ball comes across. Mackin hits this one, and the fist goes over the bar. What a score. Comes in, dropping short. Chance here oh. for a goal. The ball is hit into the back of the net. The ball dropped down. The wind held it, and the ball is pushed to the back of the net. And McCabe comes in. Mark McCabe, the man from the top of the Convent Hill. That's where his grandfather lives. He lives down by Clark. Ball are down by Bestwick. That ball's in the back of the net. That puts Shane O'Neill's in a very commanding position. Yeah, that ball looked as if it was going over the bar, but just held up in the wind, held up in the wind, and just dropped down straight on top of the keeper. I think everybody was waiting on the referee's whistle there. But Shane O'Neill's now, again, what a pick up there by McCabe. McCabe's going forward, holding on to the ball. Referee says that's a free. So definitely Shane O'Neill's are getting a little bit of momentum going here. And they scored a goal. 1 5 to 3 points. That's 8 to 3 in favour of the men from Camla. I think it's a Peter's player is very lucky there. It was a two-handed tackle. I sort of heard a black card been mentioned there, but it did look as if he had just put the two arms around him. But so the referee again, said play on. Mackin's looking for the little chip pass towards McCabe. Well, that's not McCabe, that's McGill. McGill, Christian McGill gives it inside. A chance here for and there goes to Mack and Mack and cuts on the inside and he's going to put this over the bar hits this one drives this one up and drives it over the bar and this puts Shane O'Neill's in a very commanding position now that's another super score from the boot of Mack and, and it's now 1-6 to 3 this game is starting to drift slightly from St Peter's St Peter's playing with the breeze yeah it's always one of those goals in the championship that the win took it but St Peter's need to do something in the second half And we're just getting so scores get in from different matches. Yeah, so the referee gives a free there. The big Camogie match over in Greenmore. Greenmore are ahead in extra time by a point. Very, very tight match there for the girls from Greenmore. But we're down here in the athletic grounds. Shane O'Neill's are in a commanding position in this game. St. Peter's haven't really got the grips with the breeze here. Again, putting the ball down. This time away out in the far side. It's out with the wingman, Moore. Moore's away out in the far side, checking out in the inside, cutting across, looking for somebody. Puts it up in the air. It's coming in, and it goes over the bar. That's a super strike from the boot of Fergal Moore. Yep. And 
There's no question, St. Peter's needed that score. That's four to one six. So the breeze is definitely affecting how St. Peter's are going. I would still go with what I suggested earlier on. I'd be putting the big man on the edge of the square and throwing a lot of high balls in to see what, yeah, what Shane O'Neill's full back line was made of. That's yeah, for I'd have sure. to agree with you. I have to agree with you on that one. So again, but Mackin and Fendon are having a good tussle here. Ball goes out and it's a line ball this time for St. Peter's. Barney Cannon is the linesman down there. Barney's not getting too flustered about anything here. Again, McCabe pulls him on there. He needs to watch. The referee says, play on here. Big man picks that up. McGavigan, he's looking around. The referee says, that's a free. And if you had fended in on the square there, you'd just be launching these balls down them, John Joe. So very, very tight. Dropping the ball. Picking it up. Soccered along the ground. Again, picked up this time. Going forward. McCabe comes in. Tackles McGavigan. McGavigan goes with the ball. Gives the pass inside. Very, very tough and tight. Ball's kicked up on the air. And that's a super, super strike there from the boot of the man. Sent it three quarters for St. Peter's, and that's Niall Craney, and that's a great score. And Joe McManus has just ghosted in here without anybody noticing him here, the legendary Joe McManus. So, yeah, so we're going to the point on it, but St. Peter's have upped the game a wee bit. So but as you say, the big man needs to be in there, drop a few into him, see what happens for the next couple of minutes. Connor Ruddy taking his time with this kick out. He's into the wind yeah the ball low. is kicked away from the far side St Peter's ball given away St Peter's gets the ball a chance here for the men from Lurgan to get a score driving forward McConville has the ball he puts it on his left foot and he puts it up in the air and St Peter's have hit three points in less than three minutes yeah great score well worked from a sort of set play as I say they were knew what they were doing the ball but Shane O'Neill's staying very very static in defence at the moment but just going man to man it'll be interesting to see where the keeper kicks this to because so far it hasn't worked out that far side well those those Last three scores have just brought St. Peter's back into the game here, that's for sure. Ruddy kicks this one out. It's dropping down, broken down again. St. Peter's, well, nearly got the ball, but Mackin has it under his hand and away from the far side. Checks on the inside. Two, three men chasing after him. Going up the far side. Or is that McCabe away over there on the far side? With yeah. the ball, McCabe, that's Amy McCabe, and there's tackles coming in off the ball. The ball comes in over the top here. This is a chance here. It goes in over the top of the goalkeeper, comes out, and it favoured the man in white there. He kicks this ball away. It's hanging in the air. Mackin comes in. Young Kieran Mackin driving forward with the ball. Gives the pass inside, and again, what a block down there by Hockey. But it comes into O'Rourke. O'Rourke gathers the ball up. He looks around, uses all his experience, pushing the ball over in the far side, and up comes Mark Fakin. Mark Fakin dances one way. He drops the ball. Finden gathers that one up. Finden drives forward, man hanging on him. Finden gets the ball, drops the ball. The referee says that's a free, so gives the ball over to Hockey, and Hockey and gets the ball. Going down the right hand side, looking for some runners coming inside, but the runner goes on the outside this time. A chance here for St. Peter's to get the ball in. Hockey and comes with a torn pass. He looks round, well, he was going to hit that one, but he didn't. He dropped it on his foot, and then he dropped it on the ground, and then he couldn't just get it up. And this allows the Sheer O'Neill's midfielder, Feehan, to come with Brady. Brady coming up. Pushing the ball inside. Shane O'Neill's driving up the field this time with the ball. McCabe comes out. Mackin gathers that one up. Mackin pushes it all the way out on the far side. So Shane O'Neill's just repelled that attack, holding on to the ball with a little bit of possession. O'Brien going forward with the ball. Hand to toe. He's been held there by the corner man. There's two St. Peter's men. The ball spills out on the space. And this time, ball is knocked out. And that's a line ball for Shane O'Neill's. That's for sure if the ball goes out. And the St. Peter's men along the line there weren't too happy, but if they were watching the game, they would have understood why that ball was a Shane O'Neill's ball. This time now, McCabe goes forward, driving forward. There's nobody near him. There's two. Well, this time, puts it up in the air, but he pulls it to the left and wide. So that was a chance for Shane O'Neill's. Yeah, it was intensive stuff there. I've just noticed that Niall McConnell making his whole way back there to defend. But is it really intense stuff there? It's tackle gone tackle. Kink for kink, as I say. Yeah, one six to six points in favour of the men from Kamla. The South Armagh men are ahead. Out comes seven and in comes 21 for St. Peter's. Out comes Emmett Owen McCormick. He comes out of the game. And in comes number 21. Number 21 is Connor Lavery. We had a Connor Lavery playing last night as well. And, uh, but no relation. Well, if he's as good a game as Conor Lavery last night, he'll be. He would be doing great for St. Peter's, that's for sure. <laughs> sure. For Conor Lavery for Amar Harps last night scored, I think, seven points. So the score, 1-6 to 6 points. 
halfway through the second half here in this Cormac Leonard sponsored championship in association with Linwood's Live Armagh TV here going all the way around the world and further afield Finden gathers that ball he stretches out down the right hand side he's looking up there's a runner on the inside goes on the outside now tackles coming in there's a man still on the outside and this ball goes in but he would have been better off loading it to the man standing out there saying why didn't you give that ball to me and that was the corner forward Shea Garrity shouting you should have given it to me and I would say he was probably right oh I think it was 100% right although it did look at it, it looked as if there was a redeflection there but obviously nobody had seen it so that made it would put up the yard wide but into, into Garrity or into a lot of the wee corner forward on the far side Fergal Moore they did a lot of work in the first half they're just not using them in the second half well we do say goals wins championship matches and that's the difference between these two teams we've seen it the other night with Bally McNabb he's got a very fortunate goal the other night they take them through Macken gathers that ball off he gives it to O'Rourke O'Rourke's coming up the middle with the ball there's a runner in front of him the ball is given inside now this allows Shane O'Neill to drive forward Helen Helen opens up it opened up for Helen Helen has a man on the outside and he hits this one puts it up and puts it over the bar great run there from young Park Helen he runs 16 metres with the ball he was thinking of giving it to McCabe St Peter stepped away and now we have another substitute and in comes Neil Paul Lennon Neil Paul Lennon is not a bad man to be coming into the game here out comes number 10 and that's Christian McGill and Neil Paul Lennon comes into the game Neil Paul Lennon an established footballer and uh, this man can score goals that's for sure so in comes Lennon and we have a game on now so 1-7 to 6 there's 4 points in it St Peter's playing with the breeze John Joe St Peter's they need to up the ante a little bit definitely need to down, down the ante. I think they make the change that you say and just put somebody big in there just at the front they have number 21 moving in there but uh, on Finn with his catching potential look the at ball him. is He's kicked up now. out long and a chance here now for St Peter's going forward with the ball mm. tackles coming in offloads the pass but the ball is dropped referee says he was held there very, very well. That's a handy free there from McConville to be getting. The referee is closer to us, so McConville should be well fit to put dispatch this ball over the bar from distance. But again, you know they're not putting Finden in on the square yet, so they're confident enough that they have the ability to get the scores on the board. So McConville takes a long look at the goals, stretches forward, puts it up in the air. And again, as we've seen in the first half, <laughs> the conditions, they just can't match the conditions here because the breeze is definitely blowing to the right of the goals here. You would need to be going, as we said earlier on, for the near post and let the ball just drift over the goals. Or as you say, even playing it short into somebody with a more accurate, more potential to, be to take the wind out of the, out of the combination. But still, they're very static, St. Peter's. Referee's just holding up. Referee says, hold on a minute. Let's see what's going on here. Must be substitution, yep. Well, there's a substitution. Two balls on the pitch, Damon, your favourite. Well, I, I just don't know why they just don't play on because it's not a fact in the game. The, the, the umpires or somebody could run out and lift that ball away off the field if they really wanted to. Maybe the umpires aren't allowed to move from their position. I don't know. But the ball's broken down. Macken, well, the ball, Macken gathers the ball up now. He's driving forward. Kieran Macken's going forward. A rook's on the inside. Macken's going forward. He's looking for a rook, but he gives it all the way across to his brother. That was a poor enough pass. He's into space. Connor Macken just gets his foot. That's great work to Macken. Knee Paul Lennon gets the ball. Back over to McCabe. McCabe's pushed in the back. The referee says that's a free. And again, the two men that came in for Shane O'Neill's, who was named that didn't start, are definitely starting to motor. Neil Paul Lennon and Mark McCabe combined well. And this is a free now for Shane O'Neill's. And Neil Paul Lennon has the ball under his arms, but he's leaving it to Macken. Yeah, and I'm going to see St. Peter's sort of men down in round the square ready to make the run, so maybe they're going to change their tactics. Well but Macken. again, Connor Macken. So Connor Macken and his brother Kieran runs across the left hand side looking for the pass, but Connor is well able to put this ball over the bar. And the Gaelic Life says off the ground against the wind. So you might read about that in the Gaelic Life next Friday, but you heard it here first on Linwood's Armagh TV. So Macken drives forward, puts it up in the air, hits this one, strikes it beautifully, but it goes to the right and wide. Oh, confidently hit Damon, but just accuracy again to let him down. Maybe the wind on that side. Just wait for it to be kicked out. Rainmore still a point oh, up. Oh, a quick kick out from a goalkeeper didn't work out. Oh, he nearly lifted that off the ground there and got away with it. Referee has given the free now. You know, he says play on, they give advantage there. So this time, hockey, and he's been on the ball a lot in this game, that's for sure. Driving forward. 
Oh, the ball has just bounced off over the top, picked up there by Lennon. Lennon has definitely made his uh, appearance here in the game well known. And McCabe's over in the foreground. The referee says that's a free. And uh, again, Macken has been stopped over there on the far side as well. So, but there's no question about it. Neil Paul Lennon has definitely given Shane O'Neill's another option. And we have a substitute coming in for St. Peter's. We have in coming number eight. Uh, Dara McGowan is coming in. And out comes number 12. So Rory McDonald is out. And of course, the midfielder, he wears number eight. Dara McGowan is going to the edge of the square. So we have 21 minutes gone here and Shane O'Neill's 1-7 to 6 points. Could the form book be tore asunder here in the athletic grounds in this second semi-final of the Intermediate Championship? Little bit of a push there in the back. The referee says play on. St. Peter's gather the ball up. There's a man on the inside looking for the ball. Tackle's coming in over there on the far side. The referee has blown his whistle and it's a free. Well, it's gone over the, the line. It's a line ball for Shane O'Neill's. I have to say to him and Neil Paul Lennon has made a difference. He would have lifted them 10% there as soon as he came on. Well, it is a free. Gaelic life. I got that one wrong. So. So. Oh, Mackin drops that one, but he recovers well. Gets the ball off, loads the pass to his older brother. The two Mackins combined there. Connor puts this one up in the air from distance, but he's pulling it to the left, and it's going to go out. But O'Rourke comes after it. O'Rourke, he gathers a grip that O'Rourke there by O'Rourke. Gathers the ball up, trying to get it up. He's been held. He's been pushed to the ground. He's up now. He's trying to burrow through the two. The referee says you gather that ball off the ground. Probably maybe should have had a free earlier on, but St. Peter's get on with the game. This time, hockey and offload of the pass, and he's going to look for the return pass. He gathers the return pass up, checks on the inside, and again, St. Peter's under a little bit of pressure here. Niall McConville, the man you want on the inside line, he's out with Finden. Big Finden driving forward, pushed it inside now. A chance here, Finden's looking for the return pass, but again, good defending by Shane O'Neill's, but it's up in the air, and that looks to be a super strike, and that's a brilliant strike from the boot of Darren Moore. Yeah, great score from Darren Moore. The ball didn't move at all in the wind. But as you say, maybe the Shane O'Neill's are trying what they should have, what in the second half what they should have done. The first half they're putting big high balls into the, into the St Peter's Square and they've already scored a goal from it. Well, there's only one one goal between them, a kick of the ball between them. Ronan McLean then is telling his team to calm down. There's plenty of time left. There's another substitution and Shane, coming Shane in. Shane O'Neill's have another substitute coming in here. Number 22 for Shane O'Neill's. Patrick Dorn coming in. Patrick Dorn, another good footballer from Shane O'Neill's coming in as well. So a good man to be coming in at this stage of the game. The ball is kicked long. And Macken tried to get that one, but the ball is kicked into space. And again, that's on the ground there, but the referee didn't spot it. But this time, Shane O'Neill's have gathered the ball up. And he's, well, he's penalised Shane O'Neill's. And I would say, well, it's getting a little bit of patchlins in there at the minute. But the referee, maybe if we had a wee look at that again, he may, it might have been the other way, but it's with McConville. And this is going to be put in about the house, is it? No, he's going backwards with it. No, he's going forwards earlier on there. McCabe was blown up for overholding the ball, but McConville gets the ball now. Going on the outside, trying to check on the inside. Puts this one up in the air, but it's dropping short, dropping down, and again... Good bit of defensive work there by the men from Kamla. On the ground, pick the ball up, drive him forward. Shane O'Neill's defending really, really well here. Gathers that forward. O'Rourke's coming out. Chance here now. And again, great bit of running there. Back to Macken. Macken has a man on the outside going forward. This time the ball could be good out to O'Brien. O'Brien has the ball. Back to Macken. Macken gets the ball back to O'Brien. All the way back to Connor Macken. They have somebody over on the far side. The ball goes way over to Brian on the far side. A chance here. Oh, that's the centre half back. Helen. Ball is picked up by McCabe. A good tip up there by McCabe. Holding on to the ball. Pushing it all the way back to Connor Macken. Macken going forward. Looking up. Hits this with the outside of the foot. And he would have been just better pushing it in. Lee Paul Lennon was shouting, give it to me. And we have another substitute coming in here. Out comes number nine for Shane O'Neill's. And out comes Mark Feakin. And in comes number 22, and number 22 is Patrick Dorn. So Patrick Dorn, a very useful man to be coming into the team for Shane O'Neill at this stage of the second half with five minutes left. So 1-7 seven to seven points. It's written there, so it is Damon. As I say, go goal in it exactly with a couple of minutes to go. Yeah. Shane O'Neill has been great on the break in this second half, really fast. 
and there is extra time in this game if it ends all square. We have been informed of that, so if it's all square at the end, it's into extra time. The ball breaks out. Brian Canham is looking. Brian's not getting too wide. And now Donny's saying that's a St. Peter's ball. I think Brian looked over and seen what, where the referee's arm was going, and he decided. <laughs> so Hockey and gathers that ball up. He goes over forward with the ball, pushing it all the way out on the far side. This time St. Peter's, they're down by three points, one seven to seven points. Hawking gathers it forward. Hawking's been pulled there, but the referee says play on. Hawking's still with the ball, and he's been followed by two Shane O'Neill's players. A chance here for St. Peter's, pushing the ball back into McGavigan. McGavigan pushes the pass out, this time to the corner man. The corner man, this time is Moore. Moore's on the outside, and that ball's going. It's dropping down, and it's gone to the right and wide. Yeah, it was a bit, sort of a weak shot there, but it waited for a deflection, didn't get it. But I think St. Peter's have done exactly what you've said, Damien, with their number eight there. Coming in, Darren McGowan standing right in front of the, the small square every time there's a ball coming in. So, Well, as we speak, a couple of minutes to go in the big match in Greenmore. The Greenmore Camogues are two points up again. The the girls from Balahi, so the girls from Greenmore are ahead, coming into the very dying end of extra time. Ball is kicked long here in the athletic grounds, dropping short, coming down. Hawkins after it, Lennon's after it, and Lennon stops the ball. He would have been better letting that ball go out there. This now allows St. Peter's to go forward. A chance here, but the tackle's coming in off the ball, knocked out. Ball is little dink pass inside. Finton's looking for this. Finton gathers the ball. Oh, and he's pulled to the ground. And could this be a black card? Or two black cards. It was a sandwich job. Well, we have two men down from Shin and Eels, and we have Arne Fenton down, the referees, looking for his book. Nathan Morgan's down as well, so number four. We await to see what decision the referee will make here. Black. So there we have a black card, and uh, the Shin and Eels man is pleading his innocence there. Black card. Not sure who it is that's coming off here. Yeah, we're just quickly looking for his number, but as I say, I'm not sure. Double figures, I know that much. And the referee's looking for the other Shane O'Neill's man. I wonder what he, he, like. he definitely couldn't issue two black cards, that's for sure. So, Fendon's down. And we await. I think it's Greg McCabe's coming off here, number 12, is it? That's Greg McCabe. Greg McCabe has been sent to the, to the line with a black card. But when Aaron put the foot down there, he was going through it. Well, there was only one way to stop him. Shane O'Neill would have been looking for Greg McCabe to be in with the la the dying minutes of the game here, and they're going to be bringing in Patrick Gregory. And again, Patrick Gregory, another good man to be coming in. Now, if this ball goes over the bar, there's only two points between them, and the ball is dispatched over the bar. There's only two points between them, and that's over the bar by McConville. So. We have, it interesting. we have two minutes left and we have two points in the game. Shane O'Neill's, they're down one of their star players, Greg McCabe. He's been black carded as Arn Finden was motoring towards the goals there. He was knocked down. And we have a number 30 in there for St. Peter's. Number 30 is Mark Garrity in. So St. Peter's down by two. A chance here. Ball inside. St. Peter's going forward, a man on the inside now hits this one, and there's only a point between them. That ball was put over the bar by Niall Geary, Geary, so there's only one point between them. Could we be seeing extra time in this game here in the athletic grounds? Yeah, we're just waiting to see. We're looking down the referee's table here to see how many minutes extra time is going to be played. He's having a quick conversation with somebody in his earpiece. So Jake McGill is looking at the timepiece down there, and there's only one point between them. Again, Shane O'Neill's hanging on here by one point, and we have five minutes, Ooh. five minutes of additional time. There's loads of time for either one of these two teams to win the game. So Gregory's in for Shane O'Neill's. Again, ball is broken on the far side. Chance here. But St. Peter's, the ball is on the ground. The referee says play on. A chance here for St. Peter's to draw level. Coming up the field, McConville comes out. The man you want on the ball. A little dink pass out on the far side. St. Peter's coming down the left-hand side with the ball. They're one point down right into injury time. There's five minutes of additional time called here. St. Peter's 
the momentum's with St Peter's in it this would be over the bar the referee looks up the umpire looks up the goalkeeper looks up but the umpire lifts the white flag it's all square and Darren Moore has put that one over the bar his second score it's all square here in this intermediate championship final in the 31st minute of the second half 1-7 to 10 points it's all square Darren Moore put that one over the bar again St Peter's picked up the Robbie Geary the centre half back pushing the ball back all the way back to that man that came in wearing number 30 Michael Gordy pushing it over the far side a chance here ball is up in the air and Finden goes forward he's past two men pushes the pass inside can this be the go ahead score the ball is up in the air and the ball has gone to the right and wide oh he just rushed that one there it was coming straight into his chest that was number 11 from his in Al Creaney Now just took, just took his eye off the post maybe didn't allow for the win but that was a good chance to go one from with four minutes left 31 minutes gone four minutes left five minutes of additional time called Shane O'Neill's they were in control of the game and they let three points just drift away there so they're hanging in it's all square deep into injury time here ball coming out Macken reaches to the clouds and gathers that one up and he gets his mark and that's a brilliant catch there by Macken the referee calls it forward St Peter's were not moving but again Macken pushes this one along the ground and this time a chance here, the referee says, well, there's a six of one and a half, a dozen and another there, and you could have given that either way. So the referee give it in favour of the men in white. McCabe not very happy with that decision. It was six of one and a half, a dozen of the other. Both players holding on to each other here. The goalkeeper gets this ball, gives it back inside this time to Robbie Geary, pushing it back into McGavigan, McGavigan offloads the pass this time, back inside, St Peter's driving forward with the ball, the man wearing number 11, Craney checking round, going on the outside, Mackin's after him but he goes right past him on the outside, he's going to pull the trigger here, trying to get the ball round, he hits it and it's coming in and a keeper catches that, brilliant bit of work there by the goalkeeper, Connor Ruddy under serious pressure, he pulled that one off the cross, bar down, out and with the ball, Shane O'Neill's coming up the field, that could have been the go ahead score, away over the far side, McCabe has the ball he's looking around, holding on to it he's been tackled, he's still got the hands on the ball there. he threw that ball away, referee says he's been held there and it's a free up and that's, so here we are 33 minutes almost gone here, 35 call 5 additional minutes and that ball is given away, that was a careless back pass there and that's an awful pass, that was lifted off the ground there, Straight referee, off the ground, yeah, referee let him Get away with that one. Tackles coming in here. Finden is on that ball. There's three men around him. Finden offloads the pass. Tackles coming in over on the far side. This time back to Gordy. Looks round. Gives it back to McConville. McConville's looking at the man on the outside. Could this be the go-ahead score here for St. Peter's? Right towards the end. Holding on to the ball. Ball comes out. Away over on the far side. It's up in the air. And it's coming down. And it's gone over the bar. Yes. A brilliant score there from Darren Moore. And Darren Moore, he got the point a minute ago. He's got the go-ahead score here. 33 minutes and 20 seconds. And St. Peter's get the go-ahead score here. So Ruddy puts this one out. And the ball drops Ooh. down. And this time, this and now allows... Well, the referee, he would have been better letting St. Peter's go on there because the big man was driving forward with the ball. And he's saying to the referee, why didn't you let me go on with that? The referee's calling the ball over here. Is he going to hop it, Damon, or is he going to give the free in for St. Peter's? I don't know what he's going to do here. He's talking to a lot of people here. There's a lot of time being wasted here. And Shane O'Neill's down by a point. 1-7 to 11 points. The referee, is he going to give the free, or is he going to hop the ball? He's going to hop the ball up against two, three men here. The ball goes up in the air, and again... Two or three men, the ball's on the ground, there's men diving in the ball, there's men trying to get their hands on the ball, and the referee's going to hop it up again. And it's getting all tense here towards the end. It's getting very close and very, well, it's very congested in there. You couldn't, you couldn't park a bus in there, there's that many men in there waiting for this ball to be thrown up. So the referee, he's pointing to the two big men, he's telling everybody to get out. The ball goes up, and Finden gathers that one, he's on his ground, he's held on to the ball. The referee, is he going to throw it up again, or is he going to give the free? We're just waiting to see what's happening here. Jimmy's trying to get so scores. The game in Greenmore goes to the replay. The girls from Greenmore will be heading to Balahi for the replay. It's a draw after extra time. Balahi got the equalising score deep into injury time. But here we have dramatic scenes as we wait to the end here. We're down now. The five minutes is up. The clock will show no more. The clock can only go to 35. So 
Fenton's on the ground. Will the referee hop the ball up? Will he give the free in? Will he give the free out? Or will he hop the ball again? And well, Shane O'Neill's on the wrong end of the field trying to get the equalising score. St Peter's are in the position where they want to be. They're down in the scoring zone, down here towards the right hand side, towards the cathedral end. The referee, he's going to throw it up again. This is the third time. And I would say if St Peter's grab this ball, the referee will blow the whistle. And if Shane O'Neill's gathered the ball, he will let them have a go. Ball breaks into space. Referee's given the free. And this time, so they need to get the ball up the field. They can't wait. The ball comes into the full back. McParlin. McParlin goes forward. Gives the ball into Macken. Macken gets munched there. The referee says that's a free. Shane O'Neill's. They're down by a point. They're down deep into injury time. The ball goes back. They need to be getting the ball up. Well, the referee's talking to somebody here. So the referee, is he talking to Finden? Well, he's coming over and saying, who are you? And the re- <laughs> he's saying, you know who I am, referee. So he's going to be booking. A oh. black card. A black card for Arn Finden. Well, that was a soft enough black card. So Finden... He has to take his time. The referee will add this on here. So he's going to Arn Finden. Arn Finden, he's just under a little bit of pressure. He spat his gum shield out. And uh, he seems to be in a little bit of trouble here. So Shane O'Neill's have a chance here to get the ball up the field. They can't bring a man on to the break and play. He can't come on to the break and play. They're trying to get somebody in here. Arn Finden is coming off injured. So it's all happening here. Shane O'Neill's have one chance to draw this match. And the tackle's coming in here. And could that not be construed <laughs> as a black card? The referee is holding the game up here. The sub's coming in. In comes number 27. And that's Drew Janisi coming in here. So Janisi. Janisi, Janisi, whatever you want to call him at this end of the game here. Janisi's coming into the game. So Shane O'Neill's, they're down by a point. And they need to be getting this ball into the scoring zone. The ball is pushed up towards the forwards. One chance to need. Two, three men coming up. And this time, need Paul Lennon. He's been pulled to the ground. The referee says, play on. Lennon has his hands on the it's ball. Over. And the referee has blown the whistle. The referee has blown the whistle. <laughs> you would have thought the referee would have given Shane O'Neill a chance for the score there at the end. But he blew the whistle. St. Peter's come through by the minimum of one point. 111, a 17 to 11 point. It all happened in the last five minutes of the game here. Shane O'Neill's going forward, trying to get a score. The referee, she, Neil Paul Lennon, thought he had a free. Shane O'Neill thought he had a free. The referee says, no free, play on. And then he blew the game up. So this now means that St. Peter's from Lurgan will take on Mullaban in the intermediate final. And I heard earlier on there was a big scoring difference in those games. Earlier on, St. Peter's coming out tops, but this is championship football. John Joe, what can we say? Damon, we thought the big header, the big game was coming now across McLean against Cully Hanna, but that was some finish, as I say. I don't know, Shane O'Neill's didn't know what they were thinking at the end there. They might have thought they were going to the bound. I've never seen that before in football, but brilliant, brilliant finish. And Damon, the commentary at the end there was superb. Well, it's just, we've got more breaking news that Drummer T ladies have been beaten in the Ulster Championship by the Cavan Intermediate Champions. And that's, so that means all the Armagh ladies footballers are out of Ulster and the Cavan Champions move forward here. So we're going to take a wee break here and I'll be back very shortly for the senior game. <laughs> 